Hello and welcome to this teaching video teaching. on the difference of two squares. Now let's just say we had an expression like this, x squared minus 9. And we might try and use one of the previous methods of factorisation to factorise this. Uh, we might see, is there a common term? Is there something common to this and this? Well, no, there's nothing common to both. So we can't factor out a common term. We might say, is it in the form x squared plus something x plus something? Because we know how to factorise that from previous videos. And the answer is no, because there's no x term. It's not x squared plus something x plus something. There's no x term in the middle. So this is a slightly different form, and I tend to find that students find this one hardest to spot, maybe because they have the least exposure to it. But you can use this method of factorisation whenever you have the difference, a subtraction of two things is known as a difference, you've got a difference of two square things. And what do I mean by that? Well, x squared is something squared, well it's x squared, and 9 is something squared, it's 3 squared, it's a square number. So you've got a difference, and you've got a squared thing here, and you've got a squared thing here, then you can use this factorisation technique. And the way we do it is to just have two brackets, you put a plus in the middle of one of the brackets, you put a minus in the middle of the other bracket, and then you say what is the square root of the first term? Well the square root of x squared is just x. So what we do is, as the first term of each bracket, we put the x, and then we say what is the square root of the second term? What's the square root of 9? Well it's 3, so it's the second term we put 3. And that is the complete factorisation. Now let's just check that this works by expanding it. If we do x times x, that is x squared. We've got x times minus 3, that is minus 3x. We've got 3 times x, which is plus 3x. And we've got 3 times minus 3, which is minus 9. And then if we collect like terms, the minus 3x and the plus 3x cancel. And we're just left with x squared minus 9. So it did work. Now, our examples here, we've got x squared minus 4. So, same as before, we've got a difference of two squared things. We do two brackets. We put a plus in the middle of one of them, a minus in the other. And then the square root of x squared is x. So, we put x as the first term. And the square root of 4 is 2. So, we put 2 as the second term. What about this one? We've got 9 minus y squared. Again, two brackets. We put a plus in the middle of one of them, a minus in the other, and then we do the square root of the first term, square root of 9 is 3, and then the square root of y squared is y, because y times y is y squared. And just to note that the order does matter here. If you put y plus 3 and y minus 3, well it doesn't matter so much here, because 3 plus y is the same as y plus 3, but y minus 3 is different to 3 minus y. So make sure that when you square root the first term, you put it as the first term of each of the brackets. The order does matter. Right, let's do some more. We've got 25 x squared minus 1, two brackets, 1 plus, 1 minus. What's the square root of 25x squared? Well, what times itself gives you 25x squared? Well, it's 5x, because the 5 times the 5 gives you 25, and the x times the x gives you x squared. So 5x times itself will give you 25x squared. And what's the square root of 1? Well, it's 1. So we put the 1 here and here, and I forgot to put the 5x there. Next one, question 4. We've got m squared minus 16n squared, two brackets, 1 plus, 1 minus. What's the square root of m squared? It's just m. And what's the square root of 16n squared? Well, we can square root the 16, which is 4, and square root the n squared, which is n. So it's 4n, and we've got minus 4n here. Right, some test your understanding questions. We've got these two questions here. We've got p squared minus 1, and we've got 4 minus x squared y squared. So I want you to factorise those using the difference of two squares. You may also want to try these two killer questions here as well. We've got x cubed minus x, and we've got x to the 4 minus 1. And just as a hint for these, you may need to use either more than one type of factorisation or the same type of factorisation twice. So you may want to pause the video here to have a go at those questions. Now let's have a go at these. Test your understanding 1. We've got p squared minus 1. Well, that's a squared thing, that's a squared thing, it's a difference. So we have two brackets, 1 plus, 1 minus. The square root of p squared is p. 
the square root of 1 is 1, so it's p plus 1 times p minus 1. And the second one, we have 4 minus x squared y squared. Again, two brackets, 1 plus, 1 minus. The square root of 4 is 2, so we put 2 here. And the square root of x squared y squared, well, the square root of x squared is x, the square root of y squared is y, so it's just x, y, and minus x, y. Well done if you got those right. Now, let's have a quick go at these killers. If you're up for the challenge, we've got x cubed minus x. Now, this is not the difference of two squares at the moment, because x cubed is not a square thing, is it? It's something cubed. And x itself may or may not be a square number, so we can't guarantee that's a square. It is a difference, however. But what you might notice is they both have a common factor. So we can first factorise out a common term. They both have an x in common, so we take out the x as a factor, and now we have a bracket after it, so x times what is x cubed? Well, it's x squared and x times what is minus x, which is minus 1. And then, this bracket here, that is the difference of two squares. It's a difference, x squared is something squared, and 1 is a square number. So that's going to give us x plus 1 and x minus 1. And finally, the second one, we've got x to the 4 minus 1. Now, that is the difference of two squares. That is something squared, and that is a square number. So we do our two brackets in the usual way. 1 plus, 1 minus. Now, x to the 4 is what squared? Well, it's x squared squared, because if you times x squared by x squared, those two would multiply to give x to the 4. And what's the square root of 1? It's just 1, so we put the 1 there. And now, this doesn't factorise. It's the sum of two squares. There's no way to factorise that. But this is the difference of two squares again. It's the same as we have here. So we can then factorise that bracket to get two new brackets, which are x plus 1 and x minus 1. And that is the complete factorisation. Now, just to finish off this factorisation topic, I thought I'd give you these summary questions, which uses a mixture of different types of factorisation. They all look quite similar but they use completely different types of factorization. So we've got firstly x squared minus 4x, we've got x squared minus 4, we've got x squared minus 4x plus 4, and we've got 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. So you may wish to pause the video if you want to have a go at these, but let's go through these now. We've got x squared minus 4x. Now you might think initially that this is the difference of two squares, because well, that's a squared thing, and a 4 is a square number. But 4x, however, might not be a square number. For example, if x was 3, then you'd have 4 times 3, which is 12, and that's not a square number, is it? If it was 4 on its own, that's certainly a squared thing, but if it's 4x, that's not necessarily a squared thing. So, we look at the other types of factorisation. Always check first to see if there's a common factor. So these both have a common factor of x, so we can factorise the x out, and then x times what is x squared? Well, it's x and x times what is minus 4x, where well, it's minus 4. And that is a complete factorisation. The second one, however, we've got x squared minus 4. Now, this time, it is the difference of two squares. We've got a difference of two squared things. x squared is a squared thing, 4 is a square number. So we do the approach we've been doing this video. Two brackets, 1 plus in the middle, 1 minus in the middle. The square root of x squared is x, so we put that as the first term. And the square root of 4 is 2, so we put that as the second term. The next one, we've got x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now, this one is where we got it in the form x squared plus something x or minus something x plus something. And do you remember that we find two numbers which add to give the middle number and multiply to give the last number. So what are those numbers? Well, two numbers that multiply to give four, but well, they've both got to be negative to multiply to give a positive number, but also add to give a negative number. Uh, and it's minus two and minus two. So if those are the two numbers, we do x minus two and x minus two. And then fourthly, we've got 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. Do you remember this time, because there's a number in front of the x squared, what we need to do is we need to find two numbers which add to give the middle number, which is minus 4, and times to give the first times the last number, which is positive 4. 
Now again, those two numbers are minus 2 and minus 2. So once we've found those numbers, do you remember that we can split the middle term? And if this method is not familiar, I recommend viewing the video on it. It's got 4x squared, and then we split it into minus 2x and minus 2x using those two numbers we found there, plus 1. And then do you remember that we factorise each half? So we look for a common factor here. What's common to that and that? Well, 2x is common to both. So we've got 2x, and then 2x times what is 4x squared? Well, it's 2x, and 2x times what is minus 2x? It's minus 1. And then do you remember we duplicate that bracket? And then we think what times 2x minus 1 gives you that works minus 1. And then finally, it's the final step, we say, well, what's common to this and this? Well, the whole of this bracket, 2x minus 1, is common to both. So we factorise that out. We say 2x minus 1 times what is this? Well, it's 2x. And 2x minus 1 times what gives you this? Well, it's minus 1. And that gives you the factorisation. And we could write that as 2x minus 1 squared.